I'm business development manager of CV Cascus. In Latvia, we are known as a brand, uh, as a brand CV Market. Um, uh, we are basically marketplace for jobs. But I'm here, only, only one purpose in my mind is I'm passionate about people. Generally, I'm in this industry more than 13 years. Academically, I'm in psychology. And actually, that's the trend for psychologists to go into the recruitment area. <coughs> and um, yeah, today, actually, I'm wearing two hats. The first one is a keynote speaker. The second one is a moderator. Not a pro in this area. Take, take everything uh, with a fun. I'm actually a funny guy, I think, at least so. Uh, and I uh, will try my best to actually deliver the message about the talent because actually, as, as, as a colleague told uh, already, that actually that's the thing which actually matters. That's the thing how can actually you can scale your organizations up. Product is amazing, sales is amazing, right? But the people are those who are actually delivering that. So without the further ado, uh, let's go. Wow, I'm a little bit stressed. I need to think it. It's, got, it's gonna get better, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, before I start, I, I, I'm gonna do a little bit, little pitch about us and uh, me. I told you, yeah, who am I? But there's actually one, uh, one other title I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hosting and officially, uh, here it goes. I am business development manager of CV Keskus in Latvia. So basically PL, responsibilities for Latvia. And on top of that, I'm head of people and culture of CV Keskus group in Baltics. So basically driving initiatives regarding talent uh, uh, in three Baltic countries for about 60 people. CV Keskus, as I mentioned, is a um, marketplace for jobs. We are operating two brands, CV Keskus in Estonia and CV Market in Latvia and Lithuania. Uh, and uh, the idea is that we are actually there where is the talent. Actually, we are driving candidates or future employees to your uh, recruitment funnels. Nowadays, post and prey approach is actually history. In that sense, we are, we are becoming more recruitment technology company. Not only us, also Alma Media Group and CV Online, we are basically becoming a recruitment technology company. So what I mean by that, if you pop up the hood, of our platforms, you would see a lot of AI algorithms already matching, mapping, and trying to kind of sort of connect right people with right uh, job ads. Uh, we, are, we are part of Renier Group. Uh, and this, why I'm mentioning this, this will make sense a bit later in the presentation. Renier is uh, uh, one of the biggest media companies in Europe. We are operating in uh, print media in Europe, uh, marketplaces like we do, property and cars as well. And we are entering in the uh, entertainment business. We recently acquired Life's, uh, LifeScore Group. If somebody follows the sport, you might know this brand. Uh, so wh wh why I'm mentioning this? Because uh, as we are closely integrated with this organization, uh, we, we are taking over a lot of HR policies and practices, which we are actually implementing in Baltics as well. And actually, we are doing that not only formally, we are doing actually really properly how it should be done. <sighs> To the, to the topic, talent. Talent, uh, talent is actually really, really kind of interesting topic uh, because, well, as all of us know, there's a scarcity of talent in the market in politics, right? And uh, therefore, we need to kind of adjust our policies uh, to, to, to kind of make the best out of it. Uh, and uh, one of the aspects, how can you do that is retaining top talent, retaining people. And uh, how we can get to the retention, etc. We need people who are engaged in our organization, who are motivated. And again, if we dissect a bit more, what is motivation, you can actually go to the term, which is engagement. And uh, of course, you have to start with the engagement and economics. I will drop some figures. They're, they're legit figures, I checked check that. Uh, regard, regarding the metrics of engagement correlation with the uh, with, uh, performance of the organizations. So there's, uh, there's Gallup, this is an amazing, amazing company which is studying uh, employee engagement and they're uh, doing annual surveys and they, 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 they tell us literally that companies where people are engaged, where score, the people are scoring in top percentiles of engagement, the companies tend to perform better in profitability. Also, greater productivity of those employees who are engaged in your company. Uh, of course, the turnover is a little bit less, well, significantly less. And if, we, if here are some shareholders as well, the total shareholder return within five years is actually significantly bitter, uh, bigger. So engaged people means a bit more money. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, as we know that engaged people uh, means a lot more money, a bit more money. Now, uh, uh, well, why, why still we have challenges, right? The w at least one thing, in my opinion, is that, well, uh, landscape of work is constantly changing and we have to adjust. Well, it's not only nowadays it's happening for, it's, it's happening, happening constantly, but the, there's shift constantly from, of, of behaviors, uh, habits and attitudes of people. Uh, there, like kind of, if you look at the landscape, and I actually know that I'm in a recruitment part of things, I'm, I'm working with a lot of candidates on a daily basis, interviewing them, also kind of uh, overseeing the processes. We can see that there's a shift uh, uh, to find a purpose. Uh, people, specifically Gen Z and Millennials, guilty. Um, the, the, we are seeking, seeking a purpose. Uh, it was like kind of if you if you remember your parents, maybe uh, it was like in the 90s that they were like kind of working. The, there was a theme, at least in my family, I'm working towards the pension. I need stability because eventually my end goal is like to retire. And now. I, I don't hear that. I could, I could say that generally speaking, the purpose, why I'm working, does it make any difference, right? What's the meaning of my job? That's actually a common theme now in the labor market. Good boss to great colleague, sense of belonging. This is a psychological el element because now, ironically, uh, because of uh, social media and globalization, people feel more alone than ever. And actually, sense of belonging is a really, really good, big driver for people. They're seeking for colleagues, for communities. They actually can find people to relate with. Rather than to have a great boss, maybe not the best example, I would agree. Great boss is also important, really important, to be honest. And the, the, second, the second, third, and fourth is actually a bit more, more transactional things, uh, which are uh, why I should work from nine to five, right? Actually. The job should be done. Why I should work like those artificial hours? And the second, uh, yeah, sorry. And the second thing is like work life, like office. Why I should go to the office? Workations, work from everywhere where's internet, right? This is a common theme. If you don't believe me, ask your recruiters. Are there any recruiters? Raise your hands. What are people? What are people uh, during the interview process? What are the main questions they're asking? Like kind of regarding what it was specifically regarding workplace, do you can you confirm that this is actually a topic? Working hours, remote working, right? Yeah, yeah. Th this is a common theme, and uh, you have to acknowledge that. Disclaimer, though, I checked your uh, fintech associations web pages, your career pages, uh, thinking about well, well, what is the state of your organizations currently? And well, most of you, at least uh, superficially. Uh, you're doing a really good job. At least you're telling the right message to, to potential candidates, how welcoming, how open the workspace, the job must be done rather than work from nine to five. This is really awesome. Uh, but uh, we come here to like kind of one of the angle, angles of mine today is motivation, power of motivation, because well, um, people who are engaged, uh, or if you want to have people who are engaged, we have to play with their motivation. And that's the key. Uh, if we have ever-changing landscape, motivation is the stab stability or characteristic which is rather stable in, uh, in people. Who of you know how many motivations do we have? Like two major motivations. Is there anyone? Okay. I will spoil you the, the three. There are two types of, of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And this is the key note of the key note for me today. We're going to play around the uh, motivation. So. Uh, what, what are the differences? Uh, I, I will go further and explain a bit more regarding that, but from psychological, psychology, there are two main things, extrinsic and intrinsic. Intuitively, we feel one is external, other one is internal, right? I will borrow something from one of my favorite authors, George Orwell, f farm, animal farm. We all are equal, but some of us are more equal than the others, right? And motivation also is the same thing. Both are important, really important, but one is a bit more important uh, uh, And this is intrinsic. But let's dissect a bit deeper. A extrinsic motivation, it's uh, basically external stimuli. From HR, it's basically monetary gains. Actually, lose of 
fear of losing a job is also actually a pretty good extrinsic motivation example. But actually the bonuses, bonuses, etc., uh, we, are, we are defining that as an extrinsic motivation. The funny part, or ironic part of everything is that we still base our HR uh, programs based majority of uh, extrinsic stimuli. Uh, to give you actually empiric example, if I have a quarterly financial target and bonus attached to that, right, I will, I, will do, I will do whatever to reach that bonus. And the irony about the extrinsic motivation is that I will do no less, no more. If you remove the bonus, I will not do the same job. And that's the key of the extrinsic motivation, why it's actually really, really dicey in a sense. Because uh, studies show that if you remove the stimuli, the work ethic disappears. We can work, work on that in a sense, if we companies, we are uh, mindful about that, that we already constantly just uh, use stick and carrot principles, that's fine. But actually, I would suggest, and I believe majority of the stakeholders here, think that we want to have organization filled with people who are driven to constantly reach targets with or without the motivation, uh, like kind of tangible motivation. The second thing, and this is my, my jam, intrinsic motivation, this is internal motivation. Examples would be, which I would like to use, for those of you who are budgeting each year, right? The, 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 the moment when you finalize the budget, you submit, you chat, you've been challenged and then actually it's approved, the feeling afterwards, it's priceless, guys, it's priceless. So uh, uh, the second thing is like learning. Learning generally is the intrinsic, the, the feel like I want to develop this feeling of accomplishment, I have learned new skill. This is really, really, really the dr dr driving force of the people and thus organizations. Uh, yeah, and this actually empowers people. This gives actually bigger ownership of, the, of your job. And if we dissect a bit, bit more, um, the people who are empowered to act freely, people who are receiving feedback, who are actually um, taking care of, of basically managers think about their development, um, they're actually tenden their tendencies to perform much more better. And that is actually important if you want to drive financial results eventually. How to foster in strict motivation, right? Well, disclaimer again, I believe this is the second or the third today. One glow does not fit them all. Uh, there are several, there are, each of us are unique organizations, right? And, and um, everything what is in theory, well, I, I believe it shouldn't be implemented one-on-one, -on -one, but we have to find, and the key of everything is know your audience, know your people, right? Uh, but academically, Providing autonomy, designing the uh, job tasks or the setup of, uh, of teams uh, where people are empowered to make their own decisions. There is like cliche 15, 20 years in the market like involved in the decision making. That's the thing, involve people in decision making, Take, allow them to make decisions, set their own goals. That will actually facilitate or foster environment of kind of uh, creativity and motivation. Foster learning. Uh, we will discuss this later on in panel. Really going to go you know, deeper in our empiric examples. But generally, again, not having art arti artificial uh, place. Well, we support the uh, learning, but you have to figure out what you're going what, what to learn, uh, want to learn, and then we're going to support you. No, actually, in a DNA, embedding learning culture actually <laughs> drives people. Bless you. <laughs> Build a purpose. This is a bit more... Uh, uh, let's say, etheric, in a sense, because uh, we all companies have values and mission, right? And uh, help your employees, help your colleagues uh, f tie their job to the values of the company. Finding that, you will definitely increase, uh, increase uh, their sense of purpose. And sense of purpose is important. Recognize achievement, rather self-explanatory. Not gonna focus on that, provide feedback. I believe majority of companies in Latvia are failing that. I am failing with that still also. Uh, and the sixth one, uh, I would add that it's work-life balance. Provide the uh, environment where, there, where you think about the work-life balance because this is an actual team in the labor market uh, to be healthy. Mental health is really important. A couple of examples uh, when companies are doing this really, really well, 
I tried to uh, use Latvian companies. I know them, but I didn't get approval to use them. I will tell it afterwards anyways, right? <laughs> like off the record. Uh, but yeah, the global players, I, I'm passionate about, and uh, sorry for specific Salesforce and HubSpot CMS and CRMs, this is basically my life lately. Um, HubSpot is my one of the favorite companies in the world in terms of culture. They have a term which is called uh, culture code. Uh, if, not, if you don't know about this, this is basically a set of beliefs uh, uh, company implemented while ages ago. Actually, they build up the company culture uh, from bottom up. Everybody was involved actually to define who we are, what we are, what we are doing, and actually they're sticking to it. They, they, they have this famous, they have the saying that for recruitment, culture is the same as for product marketing. Culture is the element which sells your company to your employees. They have uh, really, really awesome stuff. They're doing the employee resource group, which are, they're allowing peers, peers to network and find common grounds and wellness programs, which they're taking to extremes. Salesforce is famous for specifically feedback, how they're delivering feedback, how they're operationalizing feedback, that it's actually not annual reviews, which we are doing here in Latvia, still a lot, still really, really on a bad level really, really kind of fake, uh, but we are doing this, we're spending hours, uh, countless hours for that as managers, but they're operationalizing opera, this, like a tongue twister. And uh, the, the, the second thing, they're actually really, really famous regarding volunteers and, and, uh, and uh, good deeds. They, they, they investigated their co companies, uh, the employees are really driven by uh, good deeds, so basically they implemented that in their DNA. And Zappos is a bit controversial, uh, controversial because they have diverted, therefore I've written, wrote uh, beyond holocracy. Holocracy is a the management tendency where there's actually controlled house, it's self-governance. They implemented that, that uh, I believe, more than 10 years ago. They saw really, really good success in what means uh, self-governance is basically there's no management needed to make decisions. There's actually a system in place, so colleagues from different layers are coming together and make decisions and already are enabled to make an action. Last year they're a bit pivoted, maybe it's not perfect, but still I wanted to find, point that out. And they're famous for recognition part, they, they have so many programs for, for employees, be a hero, peer-to-peer, -peer bonuses each month, they're doing this excellent in that sense. Why I'm mentioning these companies as examples because, well, these companies and many others, Netflix is LinkedIn's, uh, name them. Google, I specifically avoided Google uh, due to one reason, actually they laid off people, right? They were a mecca, mecca of great employer, but they, they actually are evil, eventually, allegedly, allegedly. Um, uh, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, these companies are obsessed. They're not doing this just to have the check marks or to, to brag about it, but they have obsessed with that. And this is the kind of key, what I want to, so you would take away from me, at least. Uh, if you do stuff, do it properly. Don't do it just for a kind of, okay, we need to do this. Be mindful about it. Because if you put the pr people first, eventually it will transition into the revenue. Uh, doing something artificially, it will just, we see, we're gonna see just the cost center, we're not gonna see the value of that. Uh, yeah, and of course a bit about us eventually, why, why I mentioned Vignere, this is how we do stuff. I have to put the third disclaimer, we are a small organization. So it's a, it's a curse and it's actually a, a good thing as well. Good thing because, well, uh, I believe the biggest number of direct subordinates is nine in our organization for managers, right? It's actually manageable to work on a day-to-day -day basis with, with direct subordinates. The bad thing, there's a really tendency to avoid procedures. You know, ah, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, we don't need that, right? We're a small organization, we can talk everything out. And uh, it, uh, it eventually, even though we, were, we are 60 people, we, we are rather stable, our staff turn turnover is less than 3%. Uh, uh, yeah, we still, like, kind of, we, being small, we, we found out ourselves in 2017 having committees. Do you know what is committee? By the, the definition, it's a meeting about the meeting. So basically we had like product meetings in such a way that basically we come together for five hours, we discuss redundant subjects, there's no quorum at the end of the day, we go back home, right? And it happened in several, like kind of several, uh, several 
departments and uh, initiatives. And then our, it started from top to bottom. Our CEO, Mr. Pavel Skitra, is an amazing guy who started to change everything. And at that time, Spotify became a bit more posh and agile. Uh, initiatives became more uh, actuel, uh, forte. Um, so we actually transitioned our organization. We started to build up cross-functional squads. Uh, it started uh, from ID and product, meaning that uh, it, when we started to develop something, we assembled teams from different regions, different levels of organization, different functionalities. And th now we are basically doing this in every, every, every project. We have in our organization, we have freedom to initiate whatever project you want. You can assemble your team and you, you, have to, you can deliver. You have allocated designers if needed, project managers if needed. You can, you can do that. And we are basically starting from planning uh, corporate events. We're getting together. Uh, product by default, marketing by default, sales by default, CRM by default, etc. We are basically running cross-functional squads. It gives actually us a really, really good uh, way how we can give feedback through sprint reviews and actually on the fly we can exchange what is happening. On top of that, of course, we do pulse surveys constantly to actually measure whether we are moving the right direction. Still somehow 60 people, but I've got to be totally honest with you, we are here friends all, right? Uh, engagement could be better in the sense like for the surveys, like people are like really you have to push them to, to participate sometimes. Uh, learning and development also started from top to bottom. Uh, curiosity, uh, one of our values in our organization is curiosity. I know it sounds cliche, uh, but it started from CEO, which is actually working and curating, uh, curating uh, learning materials for his direct subordinates. And it goes through me to Latvian branch. Uh, also, I am the one who now who is curating the learning, learning for my colleagues in Latvia. And this year we are rolling out rolling out e-learning platform from Renier, which is basically one of the cool brands in the world online learning systems, which is integrated with Renier. It's basically pre-selected topics for each department, and we are t taking this to the next level. The global exchange and secondment. Secondment uh, meaning means a uh, kind of exchange program, like uh, how, how, how it was in a uh, university. Uh, this Erasmus Mundus, yeah. The same, same only within the organization, not only in the Baltics, as we are operating 130, 130 assets around the Europe and Africa, we are actually switching people around uh, to gain knowledge, uh, specifically product tech people and marketing people. Uh, and uh, global exchange, uh, this, is, uh, this is also thanks to our Renier. Uh, we have a lot of different organizations uh, within our group and it's systematic. It's being organized from our shareholders that we are exchanging. Because, uh, well, technology you can uprobe and actually use in different markets and principles and market challenges basically in Europe are the same. And Renier X project, we rolled out actually last month uh, in February. So basically we created a VC within the company. So basically you can uh, submit your ideas uh, and you can build a company within the company with uh, Renier money. And uh, the board is, is committed that uh, they, will, they will put you with the best mentors. We have consultancy firms which are mentoring us. We are doing, and this is actually implemented in three different layers. One is seed then it's scale it up, and then it's uh, startup as well. So either you have already a mature idea you want to scale up, you go there. If you have a seed, they, t they help you to build a uh, prototype MVP and eventually, and actually you can do that. This is in my opinion, this is an extreme positive way how to act. And to be honest, we stole it for bad, bad Google. Um, yeah. So that being said, uh, I know I diverted a bit, and this is my bad habit to divert from the team, but general team is motivation, right? Engagement. And again, if I, if I finalize final thoughts, that, that kind of what works for one company, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. But one thing I I for sure is that people are the main element to drive your success. So don't waste that, please. Employee, manage employee management systems are freaking amazing uh, thing to do. Almost said of a word. Uh, but, but actually the motivation, be mindful about that. For stakeholders who are not HRs, because for sure HRs know this. But for stakeholders, give HRs a breeding room. Let them implement the programs because they know that motivated people and how to motivate people. Because 
the insurance and other stuff maybe doesn't matter that much than actually feeling engaged, uh, developed, individual, and have a purpose. Of course, nothing is bigger than for ownership to have actual shares of the company, right? And that's actually going to be our next, uh, next, next subject, but I'll allow you to, to take it over. Thank you guys for, uh, for having me.